Welcome to the Accelerate Church broadcast. We believe you will be inspired and encouraged to follow God and His Word when you hear Pastor Jeremy preach today on the sermon series, The Blessing or the Curse. Let's head into the sanctuary now for that wisdom and insight he shares from God's Word. We gotta make this year count. And a big part of this is understanding the blessing and the curse, walking in the blessing, demonstrating the blessing. That way you're blessed for the souls that are coming in in this end time hour. And the Lord, I really believe, directed us to focus on this. And this series, The Blessing or the Curse, could change the trajectory of your life. Not only this year, but however many more years we have left. I know time is short. Time is really short. If there's 15 years left before the rapture of the church, that's still a short time. If there's 20 years left, that's a short time. But what if there's just 15 months or 15 hours left? I already mentioned it. Nothing prophetically has to happen from the Bible for Jesus to snatch the church out of here. So what are you doing? Don't play games. Get serious about walking out the blessing. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I've set before you life and death. Say it, life or death. Look at the next part. Blessing and cursing. Say it, blessing and cursing. He says, therefore, choose life. In other words, choose the blessing that both you and your descendants may live. Your decisions are going to have a domino effect to people that you may not have even met yet. If you've been here long, you know I've told the story several times about Pastor Ricky and decisions he made when I was a youngster. And a teenager, he was so committed to training me in the way I should go that you actually are reaping benefits from his obedience. But a lot of you he didn't meet and know back then, so he, you couldn't say he did it for you. He didn't, he didn't meet any of his nine grandchildren. Of course, my wife and I have seven of them, so we've contributed. that We've done our part. The others need to step it up a little more, right? <laughs> if you're watching, love you. Do your part. <laughs> They're like, we are, we are. Leave us alone. Well, we've contributed seven children here. And just like he said a while ago, he stood on the word as a promise that he'd see his children's children. Yeah. Well, that's a blessed man. That's a man that chose the blessing. And he valued the things of God higher than the things of this earth. If you don't value the things of God higher than the things of this earth, you're choosing to curse. We don't see it that way because it's not packaged that way. But I thank God for what my dad did when I was a kid so I didn't really have any say in it. My say is, can I play football? Can I play football? Please, please. I want to play football. Please, 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 please. Now, most parents, if their kid is as passionate about something as I was football, they will literally set that up as an idol and a god in their life. Not necessarily by what they say, but the way they live. If you're feeling bad in here... Obviously, the Holy Spirit's on your case. I have no idea. Who I, I'm not thinking of any person here. I'm talking about the way my dad, he chose the blessing, but it didn't always look like you were choosing the green grass. Because well, I would be, I'm telling you, I'd chomp and at the bit just to please let me play some football, man. That's all I cared about. But he said, no, there's something more important. You're taking Bible memory. Now, I'm just going to tell you, as a 13, 14, 15, 16-year-old, that did not fire me up. Bible memory. So I've got to sit in my room and memorize scripture. I want to play football. I just described the way most people are living their Christian life right now as adults. You mean God is going to require something of me? I don't like that. But the domino effect was this. Before he even met my children, the seven children, grandchildren that he has, he didn't know any of their names because I didn't know any of their names. I'm a youngster. But the domino effect now goes to that next generation and next generation. And as we've looked in this series, God chose Abraham. He said, the blessing of Abraham, I want to come on everyone that receives Christ Jesus. In Galatians 3, you ought to jot it down. If you don't know it, you've got to memorize it. Because cursed is he that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be passed down to the next generation. And by the way, in Genesis 18, he chose Abraham because he said, he will teach his children and his, their children after him to walk in my ways. What was that? The blessing. See, every command from God is an opportunity for you to be blessed. Write it down. Every command of God 
is an opportunity for you to be blessed. If you have a bad attitude about a command, you have a bad attitude about the blessing. Because every time you do what God told you to do, he leads you down paths that drip with abundance. Ah, I love it. There's nothing the enemy can do about it if you'll just follow God. So the enemy's entire game plan is to get you off of that and to make it cool to disregard God and disobey. To package life so that you don't understand what you're doing. Hey, my kid wants to do it. So Yeah, I know, but not everything your kid wants to do is really God. Because obviously God's call in my life was to pastor and not quarterback. Thank God for that. I thank God for that. There's no telling what my life would have been if my dad had different priorities. If my dad had lived like the average American dad right now, he would have fostered in me an idol that I probably still wouldn't be rid of at 43 years old. Why do you think stadiums are full of guys my age, and some of them even older, some younger, that paint themselves completely head to toe, act foolish, drink beer all day? What are you living for, man? Jesus is coming. You'll shout for a pig skin, but you talk, someone talks to you about your relationship with God and you get mad. What's going on? You're living the cursed life and you need somebody to say, hang on. God already called heaven and earth as a witness. It's your choice. You're choosing the curse. Make a different decision. Get this. The blessing equals life. The curse equals death. But the choice is ours. The blessing equals life. The curse equals death. But the choice is ours. In other words, we're not victims. Well, it's just the cards that I was dealt. No, I'm going to choose the blessing. And I challenge you and charge you before God himself. Choose the blessing. Walk out the blessing lifestyle. Stop living in the curse. Don't put up with symptoms of the curse. Romans 5, 17 tells us we're not victims. It says, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life. There's no way that you could read that. Will reign in life and get from that, well, I'm a victim. I can't, I can't help what people do to me. Of course you can't help what people do to you, but you can help what you do to them. You don't, you aren't always responsible for the circumstance you find yourself in. But you are responsible for your response in that circumstance. And the Bible says that you're going to reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Woo! That's powerful right there. We reign in life through Jesus. If we reign, that means we are in the position of power. What does that mean? If we're going to live the blessed life, it's going to be because we made the decision because he set us up where we reign. He reigns above everything. We reign above our own life. Isn't that amazing? And those that he's going to use throughout eternity to do who knows what throughout eternity are going to be those that decide, you know what? I'm going to take the place of reigning over sin, over depression, over sickness and darkness in my life. I'm going to take control. I'm going to walk the blessed life in Jesus' name. A huge key to all of this is to watch your mouth. You see, I've showed you already, it's a choice, the blessing, the curse, that through the one, Jesus Christ, will reign in life. I mentioned Galatians 3. He's the only one that died on a tree so that we could be blessed. So all of this is rightfully ours. Yet if you don't watch your mouth, you'll undo what God's wanting to do in your life. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers, and that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. We cannot walk in the blessing and talk the curse. It ain't going to work. I said, You're not going to be able to walk in the blessing and talk the curse. 
Proverbs 18.21 definitely tells us that when it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The Lord has created us as speaking spirit beings. Yes, you're a human being. You have a flesh suit. You're right here. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have that on, right? Um, but he made us spirit beings. You're going to live forever. When someone passes away and it hurts our hearts, and we've lost many that have, they're still alive, though, because they have a spirit being. They just lay this flesh down. And we lay it in the ground, and eventually it dissolves, okay? That's what eventually what happens. It doesn't really make you feel real good about the flesh suit you live in, but your spirit is going to live forever until we get that immortal body. Praise God. I'm excited about that one. That's going to be fun. But did you know the Bible tells us that angels looked in and saw the creation of man and actually made the statement, what is man? That God is even mindful of. See, what, what is man? What is it? It's amazing. He made us his creation. Where is prize creation? When you create something, I was sharing this with my daughter the other day. They get into creating these little videos. They do these skits on this video. They know how to do it on a nap. They add the text and all that. It's really pretty cool to see some of the stuff they do if you have 10 minutes to sit there and watch them go through it all. <laughs> and they'll go through that and make that video, right? But they have certain ones that are their favorites. Now, they created it, so they get, they get to pick what's their favorite. And I was explaining that to my daughter. So you know how you create these videos? Yeah, and you have several of them that you don't really like, right? But you have one that you like above them. Right, yeah, it's my favorite. Well, why? You created it. The creator can pick what's its favorite creation, for lack of a better way of expressing this. Well, our creator created man in his image. And we're speaking spirits in his image. God is a spirit. Those that worship him have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? So he's a spirit. And he created us spirit beings that speak. And I was thinking about this. What we say matters a lot. You need to line up what, what you are saying with what God said. God wants you blessed. And before this series is over, I'm going to show you list after list. Just You can go right down the list and say, that's the curse, that's the blessing. That's the curse, that's the blessing. That's the curse, that's the blessing. So that you know what to talk. And I'm just setting this up ahead of time before we go through that list because what you say matters. It's just interesting because uh, Pastor Ricky already was in this flow and we hadn't talked previously to this service about this. You need to know this. What you say matters. What God says matters in it more than anyone. You need to speak what God said even if you're the only person you know that says it. Say this out loud. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. with Abraham's blessing. Okay? Now, you're going to have to say that till you believe that. See, just repeating after pastor doesn't mean you believe it in your heart. But if you want the life that's in the blessing, you've got to keep speaking that. James said it like this, and he's the first pastor in the New Testament, James 3.10. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. So he tells us as New Testament Christians... We should not speak the blessing and the cursing. That should not be our norm. Yet, if you look at most American Christian lifestyles, it's exactly the norm. They'll speak the blessing in church, and if you repeated our sayings as you were coming this morning, you were speaking the blessing. But if you leave here and you say, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it this week. Oh, I'm broke. Oh, no. Oh, man, it's looking dark. What is that? That's not the blessing. That's the curse. You don't need to be speaking both. Don't uproot the words you've already spoken. Keep speaking what God said. Amen? Amen? Hey, folks, this is a big part of making this year count. Look at your neighbor again and say, watch your mouth. <laughs> Notice I didn't tell you to smile that time. I did the first time, but the second time, you better watch your mouth. Yeah? You need somebody in your life that can tell you that. Because I, um, James said a couple of verses before this, look at this. No man can tame the tongue. So, you know, your neighbor can look at you right here that's sitting next to you and tell you to watch your mouth. But then James said this, no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. That's on your own. That's not encouraging. Nobody ever runs the aisle when we read that verse. Instead, they start thinking about, oh, yeah, the way I talked this week. All right. Here's the goal. Get your tongue under the influence of the Holy Spirit. This is why, listen to me. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence is you speak in other tongues. You need to do that today. 
You need to ask Jesus, say, Lord, if this is from you, I thank you right now that you'd baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Just like I told you Wednesday, if Alex, our drummer, could be filled sitting in Higgins, Texas, right outside there in the middle of nowhere in his broken down vehicle and ask the Lord to fill him with the Holy Spirit, the Lord could fill you with the Holy Spirit right here in church, at your house, in your car. Are you listening? The Holy Spirit, he's just waiting on an invitation. Now, here's something I learned as a kid. He's a gentleman. I didn't always know what that meant. I was like, okay, what does that mean? That means he comes where he's invited. So invite him in. And God's not going to give you an evil gift. The first name there of the Holy Spirit is holy. And if you're going to have to watch your mouth, and the Bible just tells you, I mean, you're setting up like a daisy there, that you're not going to tame it by yourself. You need help of the Holy Ghost. And if you'll spend time every day praying in the Holy Ghost, this is step one. See, what happens is God takes control of your tongue. The words bubble up from your spirit, man. And you have to yield and give utterance to it from your mouth. And, and so it sounds, it's all different for everyone, right? And so I've, when you do it a lot, you kind of have the first few words. You kind of end up memorizing them in a way. I have no idea what they are. But it's just because it's what I'm familiar with. If I was to ask Garrett, I've, when you get around people, you kind of get to know what their first ones sound like because they, they, it's the first words that they have. It sounds like gibberish to the natural mind. So therefore, a lot of people freak out about it. The devil's built strongholds around it because he wants you to keep undermining what God has already done by buying the blessing. So you'll keep speaking the curse. But if you'll get it under the control of the Holy Spirit and you'll spend significant time to a point where you're spending hours a day praying in the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Then what will happen when you decide to let some curse come out of your mouth, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you so hard you'll be like, it's like a bridle. Pull back. Because you're not going to be able to do it alone. So you might as well just fly the white flag on that one. Don't sit up in your neck like, oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Right now you don't have it, even saying that. You've got to have the Holy Spirit in a position where you're submitted to him. Amen. 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 And it's amazing to me that he, he uses our tongues to pray out the perfect will of God. So if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit and you want to be, if you struggled, if you were previously exposed to doctrines that honestly, and when I say this, this might offend you if you've been exposed to it, but they're of the devil. Only the devil would tell you the Holy Spirit's not for everyone. Think about it. Who else would come up with that? Well, it's not for everybody. Says who? The devil? Because he's scared of it. When you pray in the Holy Spirit every day, you're charging yourself up. Now, see, I, I drive a car that has to be charged up. I'm not a big eco guy. In fact, I went and bought me an old pickup that leaks oil on my driveway, that smokes everywhere. Because I said, man, I, I can't just go total techie here. But I have to say this. It's kind of fun because I just plug it in. It's charged up. I can go about 200 miles. Just go, go, go. It's fun. But what's not fun is when you're running low on charge. And every time I see that thing going down, 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 I think to myself, I wish Christians would do what I'm about to do and go plug back in. Instead, you know what Christians do a lot of times? I'll make it anyway. So we see you parked beside the highway. It's a dirty shame. So those of you that don't plug your car in and you still get gasoline, I still have a couple of those that I do that with myself. Uh, they're not giving that away anymore, are they? It's all right. He's our provider. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen. I've seen a lot of them broken down beside the highway for whatever reason. The dirty shame is when you run out of gas because you're so used to running on E. I'll push it. I'll push it. I can make it. I can make it. Oh, no. You know to refill. If you're walking with God, if he's called you to do something, and you start running on fumes, let's say, it's time to refill. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas, and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. 
with events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. When you're serving God, you're going to have to be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being filled. Otherwise, you're going to let out poison and the curse is going to be released. Wow. Y'all see why this is important? Why this is a huge part of making this year count? Look at your neighbor this time. Smile real big, as big as you can. Say, watch your mouth. There you go. This is a tall task, right? Yeah. We got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. I just want you to know the tongue is one reason. Some people never walk in the blessing. The tongue. The tongue. Their tongue. Not what someone else said, what you say. You don't need to worry about what other people say. Unless you take those words and make them your own, they don't have any power over you. People that say you're a loser, you won't amount to anything. Oh, you're just goofy, you're weird, you're strange, you're odd. All that stuff is from the devil. And until you take it and you're like, I am goofy, I am kind of strange, I am ugly. I... See, you got to stop that. Don't take words that you can't find in the Word and speak them over yourself. These are basic fundamentals. I know many of you that come to Accelerate, you know this. But I'll tell you what I told our basketball team before. I know you know the fundamentals. However, when I watch an execution form, comes, it comes time for that, it's not happening. And that's a big problem if you're living this Christian life. The tiniest pressure gets on you. Cursing comes out. That's, a, that's not a good sign, right? So here's some fundamentals we got to remember to walk in the blessing. One, we've read it out of Galatians 3. I've referenced it even earlier today. Christ died so that... I would be free from the curse, and so that I'd be blessed with Abraham's blessing. That's a basic. That's a fundamental. You've got to keep that in the back of your mind. Christ died on the cross. Jesus did. So that now I'm attached to that blessing of Abraham. Glory to God. Number two, we must have the Lord's help to watch our mouths. I've just spent the last several minutes talking to you about that. We must have the Lord's help, and he's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us with this specific thing. So that we watch our mouths. You told your neighbor three times, if you listen to me, watch your mouth. And it's more important than if I just told you the rest of this whole day. Just tell them, watch your mouth. Or watch your mouth. That would be kind of weird and strange. But yet, it still wouldn't emphasize it to the point it needs to be emphasized. you got to watch what you say. Number three, fundamental, I want to mention here, is we must repent of all known sin. Yeah. We've got to repent of all known sin so that we stop the curse from robbing us. Now, this is fresh off the press with me uh, for this morning. The Holy Spirit woke me up, and I just want you to know this. Write it down so you never forget it. Sin connects us to the curse. But here's the problem. Sin feels good in the moment. The temptation, we all, a lot of people's minds immediately go to lust, but there's more than that. Refusing to forgive, I mentioned a while ago. Think about it. If someone, someone's name is brought up and immediately these feelings overtaking you, like, oh, Lord, help me. I don't know if I can handle these people. Um, let me tell you, sin is still in you. So you still have this connection to the curse. Now, see, that didn't go over real big. I get it. People are like, hmm, I can hold grudges if I want. No, you can't. If we're talking about you can lust whenever you want, you would agree with me. No, you can't. Right? I know we live in a mixed up world. Not even that one now is clear. But here it's very clear. You can't live in lust without being a fornicator in your heart and an adulterer in your heart. And that's where the Lord's wanting to take up residence. So holding grudges is a temptation that some people refuse to uh, resist. They'll hold a grudge. And they'll even be proud about it. Well, that connects you to a curse. We just It's like I have to connect these dots for you today because why is it we're missing out on this? Most of you have heard that God wants you blessed, but why do we not walk in it to the fullness of what we could? I'm, I'm exposing the reasons why. Yeah. Well, I just don't think they did me right. Well, get over yourself. If you want to tell someone off, it'll feel good in the moment. If you're mad, someone makes you mad, 
Don't sit here and act like you never felt good when you told somebody off. But the payment for that many times is stuff that you really can't recoup. Folks, you know, I, we mentioned it. We're getting more and more letters from prisons. And we're going to the prisons once they, the stupid COVID tyranny is released a little bit. We're going to go there in person, praise God, and send teams of men to go. And I'm excited about it. Um, but in the meantime, we were having several of these guys write. And they're wanting letters back. I want, I want to challenge you. If you don't do anything else, just what Pastor Ricky was saying, what Miss Aaron said last week, just get involved. You can write a letter. And what I'm not going to do is women allow you to become pen pals with some man there and scam you, okay? Yeah. Ain't going to happen on my watch. Love you. <laughs> I love all you guys listening right now, too. But, I mean, I was born maybe at night. I don't think I actually was, but it wasn't last night. If I was born in the day, it wasn't yesterday, I can tell you that. <laughs> Just know this, sin feels good in the moment. Else no one would ever commit sin. Are you with me on that? Amen. So let's just acknowledge that. But sin, though, connects you to the curse. You see, if you yield yourself to lust, you won't love your wife properly. It's just a fact. People are like, I don't, I don't like, well, you, this is uncomf. So just live in your bubble of this, like you don't ever deal with reality here, folks. But if you don't get sin out of your life, you won't be getting the curse out of your life. So I don't call out sin because I want to preach my conviction on you, make you feel bad. I want to get the curse out of your life. That's why I bring up alcohol all the time. Because it's sin. Why is it every time revivals hit, bars are shut down? Because people want to get rid of sin. But now we live in a time where they're saying, just mix it all up together. I can lead in my church and drink. Not here you can't. You got to get set free. Because I really want to lead people into freedom, which means this. If, if we're bound ourselves, how am I going to lead them to freedom? It doesn't make any sense. Sin connects you to the curse. Well, this wraps up Pastor Jeremy's teaching on the blessing or the curse for today. Although there's much more to be heard from him and you can access that online at our website, accelerate.church.cc. Under the sermons tab, you'll find the blessing or the curse along with everything else Pastor Jeremy has preached. And if you are in the area, we have a seat for you right here at Accelerate Church. We invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. or Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. in Amarillo. We're located at 4400 South Crockett. And again, we have a seat waiting for you. We're so glad you joined us on today's broadcast. We believe you'll be blessed as you apply God's word.